Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the tennis DFS slate for uh, September 18th. And I want to do more of these, but just the timing of when these slates start uh, makes it somewhat difficult. But because it is a 1 p.m. Eastern start, and I do have a few minutes, I figured I would do this uh, this video. And as far as I can tell, there's very few, if not zero, uh, tennis DFS videos out there on a regular basis. So. I figured I would put one up here and uh, go over how I kind of attack tennis slates in general with this slate as a pretty good example. And I'm going to get into the weeds a little bit, not with respect to the actual players, but just my process of how I use projections and how I analyze things and go over how I actually build my lineups and build my thoughts on this sport. Uh, as you guys know, this sport is very similar to MMA uh, in that you have two fighters, two players against each other. Um, and one fight or one match does not co-depend on the other one. So there's no correlation issues involved. Um, and it's kind of a cool, you know, it's kind of a cool setup in that, you know, it's very rare, if ever, that a losing uh, player is going to score better than the winning player. You know, it's not like like the NBA where you can lose the game and your guys score more fantasy points. Um, and in any case, this is getting way too, way too, way too general. Let's get into the slate, and I will go over how uh, I'm actually going through this. So the first thing I want to show you, and this is something I don't show too often. This is the kind of the raw sort of like sheet file where I look at all the different inputs from around the industry, and these have all been kind of some of these have been kind of tweaked or whatever, just to kind of show you like how tight some of the projections are you know like this is kind of a distribution of projections and unlike a lot of sports the uh projections are really really close um and that's primarily because the inputs that they're using are essentially win odds aces uh, aces projections and things like that things that don't require that much uh tweaking OK, um, like, for example, if you look at the matches, one odds, which are over here in column s &T, even across, you know, different projection systems. I mean, they're all almost the same because they're taking them pretty much from, you know, the Vegas implied lines. OK, uh, so unlike MMA, where you, know, you have two fighters with equal win, win odds, they can have wildly different projections because of their styles and things like that. With some very rare exceptions, tennis does not have that same wide uh, disparity between uh, between players with the same win odds. Let's put it that way. Um, you would think, or maybe you wouldn't think, that you have two guys that are four to one to win. One of them is more likely to 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 win in straight sets than the other one. It's not exactly like that. It doesn't distribute quite in that random way like in some of these other sports. Um, so that's why the projections are very, very similar kind of throughout the industry. And even when I tweak them for accuracy, they're very, very close. Um, but the first thing I will do is I will check and see if there's some sort of outlier here. And, and I do notice that there's a little bit of, of, uh, of, uh, of an under projection one, in one place on the Maria Matea side. So uh, I will have to consider that if I'm going to get to her. I don't think I'm going to get to a $4,200 player anyway, but if, if I were going to, or if it was a real need, I might like dive into why this projection might be a little bit low relative to everybody else. Because again, they're all based on the same inputs and there's not a lot of room for, for nuance when it comes to tennis projections. So uh, that's the one thing. Um, and one way you could do that, I mean, I have this standard deviation of projections that I can just kind of rank this way. Uh, and I do that every day, pretty much all sports, but especially in tennis, because to see a standard deviation of high is very rare. And there's really nothing here today, for example. And the same thing goes with ownership, right? What, what most sites do and what most ownership projections, including mine, do is they take the median projections, they run them through optimizers, and they say, OK, who's showing up the most? And then, yeah, you factor in some other algorithms and some other things about like industry mentions, things like that. It's come up with our other ownership projections. But the ownership projections are are fair are fairly tight as well. Um, 
But I will note that there's a couple that are a little bit different, like one, one, one place is Bouchard, like significantly higher. Um, and again, if, if, if one person is significantly higher, then someone else got to be lower. Baptiste is significantly higher in one place. Um, so that's something to consider. Dolahide is significantly higher in one place. Um, and, and this is, by the way, my, my observation is that typically the ownership projections of the highest owned players are typically too low. Uh, anyway. So without getting into, you know, who's doing what, you know, who, who ownership projections are better, this does change throughout the course of the year. Um, the, 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 usually the, the public over owns the players that are expected to be the highest owned. Like if, if the, tie, the highest owned players are expected to be 25, they're usually 35. That's just, that's just the way it is. And I, and I try to adjust for that when I come up with my actual sheets. Um, and that is something that's, that's, I guess, a little bit advanced, is, is to see what's projected and know which players and which spots are typically under-projected from, from that standpoint. Okay. Um, so that the first thing I'll look at is, is that type of thing. Like uh, Before I even look at who's the good play, I will see that, that uh, Val Veronica uh, – Matitova, whatever, is, is probably the highest owned. And then Peyton Stearns is also going to be significantly high owned. And and, and, when, and when that happens, whenever I see an $8,100 player that's rates to be that high, it's probably because it's it's a it's a salary mis misprice, which happens all the time in tennis. It doesn't happen almost ever in MMA unless it's a replacement fighter, but it happens all the time in tennis. So we'd have we'll have to look into that. Um, like for example, I mean, I can just even tell you right off the bat. I mean, you have an eighty-one hundred dollar player, and her uh, match is one odds or about seventy percent. That's that's typically a misprice, you know, because uh, and then you know because you compare her even to a couple below Jasmine and Daniel Collins, they're they're the same price, but they're only sixty-two and fifty-eight percent to win. So you're going to get very natural, you know. Uh, I guess a very naturally good projection out of somebody like this, and which which is why she's going to be probably somewhat owned. Um, so those are the things I'm looking at. You know, uh, Peyton Stearns probably high owned. Question is, is is she worth it? Uh, Veronica is she's forty percent owned or so. Um, even when you adjust 34, 36, whatever, they're going to be the highest owned. And I would probably imagine that these are somewhat higher. Um, again, I think that this is going to be closer to 37 38 and this one for the reasons i just mentioned before is probably going to be closer to 37 38 this column r is, is kind of like the aggregate sort of not exactly but sort of um and that's what's going to show up in my sheets eventually um so that's 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 the first thing i'm going to do here is is, is identify that now next thing i'll do and i usually do this i'm just going to show you um when you subscribe to the site, you get access to this page, like on the sheets, on the sheet, uh, on the on the on the site, where it has kind of like a summary of everything, and I kind of rank them all by um, by uh, sheets value score, and what that does, it kind of like normalizes uh, salary with fantasy points or whatever, and just overall ranks these players. Um, by sheets value score, which I think is probably the best way to do it. And the first thing, again, you'll notice here is once again, you'll see Peyton Stearns is a very, very nice play because what you want to do when you're looking at, at ranking these players is when you're, and I've done this with my other sports as well. What you're looking for is a sheets value score that's high of a player whose salary is low. Okay, because typically what happens is, and just because I know this, the sheets value score is a metric which really favors the higher priced fighters or players or tennis players or whatever. So if you see a high sheets value score from a you know, top salary player, you know, that seems to make sense. But if you see a high sheets value score from someone who's not quite as high, those, those players usually tend to be very, very strong. Okay. And likewise, if you wanted to rate these by points per dollar, 
What you're looking for here is the opposite. You're looking for a high points per dollar play that has a high salary because usually the high points per dollar plays typically favor the low priced uh, players. So the higher, higher salaried players that are high point per dollar plays are strong as well. So no matter how you rate these, um, no matter how you rate these, Peyton Stern is going to show up as, as probably the, the, the strongest, right, overall play on the slate. Um, are you willing to eat the ownership? That's, uh, that's for another question. But, but I would certainly rate her to be the overall top play. And then, not surprisingly, as we mentioned earlier, this uh, Kudermatova rated high in ownership because, again, she's she's got a high sheets value score and her salaries are, I mean, not lower than these guys, but relatively low, okay? So when you're trying to build, like, a core just from the sheets, you're going to try to do something like, you know, about Veronica and Peyton Stearns. And then when you look, like, these other things you're looking for, like Pellini, Giorgio, like these are again, you know, you want the lowest price players you could come up with that are up here in this range. So, um, as far as sheets value score, so Paolini looks to be a strong play. No surprise, about thirty percent owned, right? Um, Georgie, eighty four hundred. Um, that's not bad either. But you, you'll notice that these are sort of efficient, right? I mean, like some of these players are good plays, and they're going to be pretty highly owned and that's what makes tennis kind of difficult it really does become a lot of especially if you're going to play gdps you really have to to focus in on some lineup construction now the first thing that i like to do with nma not the first thing, this is actually something that really i don't want to say perfected but i've been really slamming the slam home what you can do if you want to try to get leverage to be a good gpp player is is think of think of things this way what you want to do in these binary outcomes, well, sort of binary outcomes, in, in these in these DFS sports where it's one against the other, you want to identify a really awesome play, okay? And then see if the opponent is an okay play, right? And and typically in the in the high field GPPs, the okay play is just as good, if not better, than the excellent play. And the reason why is because if something is an absolute smash excellent play, it's because all the metrics support it and then everybody sees it and then everybody plays it. And if her opponent or his opponent or whatever is an okay play, then you're getting an okay play with leverage against what's obviously a better play. And that's, that's a, a very, you know, very good way to play these types of sports. Um, so the first thing I'm going to look at is Peyton Stearns at 8,100? Because she's probably the best player on the board. I'm, let's look at Dola Hyde for a minute. So, again, you're almost never going to get this in tennis because it's so much based on the win odds. Um, but sometimes you get misprices both ways. So, Dola Hyde, unfortunately, is not a good play almost at all. So, I don't think Dola Hyde is probably the greatest leverage in the world. Um, let's look at. Um, some of these others. Let's look at, at Veronica's opponent. Why not? Let's look at Bouchard. So she is 5,300. Um, and it's not that great a play either. So going directly against these two might not provide the same type of juice that you might get in, in an MMA fight when when sometimes like the opponent has just more upside, even though her win his or her win odds are not as great. It just doesn't quite work that way in tennis. Um but let's look at some of these others, I guess, that could be high owned. So maybe, maybe we could get some leverage against these these uh, these ladies. So, like you have Paolini at thirty percent owned, Bel uh, Benchik at at twenty eight percent owned. Let's see who their opponents are. Maybe get a break here. Paolini's against Martina Trevisan or Trevisian, and likewise, you know, not the greatest with respect to um, to leverage. Although I will say that at least in in well, let, let's compare, by the way, a uh, Trevisian to Bouchard and Dalahide. At least Bouchard and Dalahide are a much lower own, you know, than than their counterpart. Like Trevisian's a full seventeen percent, so it's not as if you're getting a huge ownership discount on Trevisian. I would rather 
probably played Bouchard or 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 um, or Dalahai, but then again, they rate significantly lower than Trevisan. So again, tennis is rough when it comes to this kind of thing, but you still have to go through this process. Georgie is a pretty good play, twenty six percent owned. Let's see how Sharif rates. Um, Sharif, not terrible. Okay. Um, but again, you're not finding any just overall smash and leverage plays either. So the next thing that you, you might want to think about if you want to get leverage is to do is to do things like within the price range. So if you have Peyton Stearns, who's a really, really good play at 8100 you look around the price range and see if anybody who's not quite as good, but was significantly lower owned. And so you have a couple to choose from here. Paolini, Georgie and Collins, and you are getting a little bit of an ownership break here. You're getting Collins at 24%, maybe. So that's 12% discounts, all right? But again, she rates to be a lower play. So I think overall, like, if you were just trying to eyeball this from a, you know, from a hand-building perspective, it's going to be difficult to find, like, a good, like, leveragey, unique type situation and that's what as I said, it's only 14 fight 14 fight let's keep doing this it's only a 14 match slate so it's going to be it's going to be tough um but let's just see before we get into the lineup uh using saberson which i think is very very important for 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 tennis let's see if we just can't build a like a hand-built lineup with what we have here um so let's just see what it would look like. Okay, we're gonna play. Let's let's play Stearns. We're gonna play Valentina. Where, where is she? No, Veronica. Sorry. And, and and we start with those. And there's a couple of ways you could go here, right? You could probably do all mid range stuff, or. If you play went up to Navarra and Keenan, which are really really good plays, then you probably have to play, you know, something down here, you know. Um, so let's take a look first. Look, if we try to get it with just only mid rangers, let's just see if we pile all these 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 ladies in. How much money we have, we need to save after that? Definitely need to save something. But well, the first thing I'll notice is that French is probably going to be worth a stab here just because she's going to save some salary so we'll put her in first and if we do that then at 8400 a man it becomes pretty it becomes pretty easy right you play Paolini you play Georgie and can't actually this is kind of cool because you can't quite get everything you want if you can't even quite get to Benchik, you're going to have to save a little bit of money somewhere playing just the quote-unquote best plays. So what I'd like to do then, again, my hand built to see where do I want to save. Um, well, what's cool about this is that if I could go from 7,100 French down to to uh, to Haddad uh, Maya, get a little bit of leverage, I guess, over what could be a good play in Collins which we're not playing this lineup. So we could play this. Leave 300 on the table. I think is a very reasonable, very reasonable way to start. Okay. Um, okay. Let's, let's just, let's just put that in for the time being. Right. Um, now let's have some fun. Let's, let's go to Saberson and see what lineup builds we would get to using different settings on Sabersim. All right, so we're defaulting on Sabersim's projections right now, but but let's let's upload mine for now, or as they stand now. It's a better way to put it because they are these are all going to change. Um, <coughs> this is the way I keep my file. If you had a true DFS membership with Sabersim, it would go. You would automatically default to the same percent projections. All right, so let's uh, 
I mean, to, to my projections within Saberson. So here we go. So we're going to upload my, my projections and my ownership projections. And we have to figure out what we want to do. So let's say we were going to play 40 lineups, for example. We don't need to sim 5,000. We don't need to build 5,000. So we'll build, we'll build 1,000 just to give us a pool. We're not even going to need that this many, but make sure it's on a sim uh, toggle. Min salary 47.5. I mean, I don't even need a min salary. Because again, you're not going to get anything with very little anyway, with with the way projections are in tennis. We're we're going to put uh, we'll put 150 max here. It doesn't matter, but we'll put we're not just not going to be 10,000 entries. It'll be more like a thousand entries. So we'll put this in. No no lineup rules. No anything else. We're just going to build 40 lineups, just like this. And then we're going to see what it gives us. And then we're going to figure out, we're going to look at different ways of ranking them, the lineups. I'm projecting that, look, that you're just going to get a lot of, of Peyton Stearns. And Peyton Stearns, Veronica, is just going to show up in quite a few lineups, um, if not almost all of them. Um, now, I'll be curious to know, what the rest of the builds and what the rest of the exposures looks like. I imagine it's going to be the same, same, the same uh, players I mentioned, but then we're going to screw with the settings and see what we have. Okay. So, all right. So let's just see what we have here. Let's put these aside for a second. So you have in 50 lineups, you have Peyton Stearns in a hundred percent, which I project, project predicted. Then you have Veronica at 65 and then Paolini at 67%. Um, which makes sense. It was probably my second, right? Let's refer to this. It's probably the second best play because you have 8,300 and rated really high. Um, Georgie is interesting. Georgie, I had rated just a little bit lower than Paolini, but Georgie only ended up getting on 23%. And the reason why I bring all this up is because, and this is this is what I find fun. I mean, tennis is, is a difficult sport because most of the people that play are sort of sharp. And they're going to take very similar projections as I do and run them through optimizers and, you know, just fire. So if you could run these optimizers on your own and see what people are likely to fire, you can kind of mess around, you know, like, like if I know that, that Stearns and Paolini or whatever are going to get like that much higher than say, or Paolini specifically much higher than Georgie, then again, I think, I think I could maybe get a little bit over the field on Georgie instead. Okay. But this is why you do this in advance. Now, the, so here's the important thing. These lineups are being sorted by projected score, which is basically just the, 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 you know, the, the median projection, like this number here, you know, um, run through the optimizer, run through the calculator, the top 40 scores are just listed here. Okay. Uh, the median projection. Now, I don't know how many of tennis players are using straight optimizers versus, you know, kind of ownership adjusting optimizers or whatever, or, or smart randomizers or whatever. But I still believe that the majority of, of people are either not using an optimizer at all or, or, or more likely using settings sort of like this. And then what they're going to do is when they run an optimizer like this, they're going to say, well, I'm not playing 100% Peyton Stearns. And then they'll just reduce the amount of exposure they will have. So and this is, again, what I, I think people would do. Now, again, you could do these in whatever optimizer you are, but let's just say you were doing it in Saberton. Let's say, oh, I don't want to have more than 50% of anybody, you know, so I'm going to do this. And then I'll, but you probably would have done it actually before the build, but maybe not. Maybe you didn't know that you were going to get so much of one player and then let's say, oh, let's let's I don't need that. So let's let's just reduce everybody to max fifty percent. Okay, um, and we'll put Pliskova. Now I don't know why Pliskova is showing up so high. It's very interesting. Like for me, like I would have expected. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that Maria Marta to be higher because Pliskova are saving a thousand. Right? So this is what I think actually most players will end up having something like this now 
what this usually does in, in this process is see i think that this kind of confuses the process for someone who plays like this because on the one hand they're using projected score as a as a metric as the guideline for how they want to rank their line, lineups and then at the, and then in addition but however they're then just manually reducing exposure okay i think that i think that has conflicting i think that has conflict you know i, I think that you have conflicting philosophies when you do that i think that if you're going to make a decision that you are not going to want 50% of somebody or if you don't want to uh, whatever um i think you need to use a setting that accounts more for for ownership fade or, or you know what i mean then as opposed to just running your medians and then manually making an ownership fade okay I, I don't know if that makes any sense but that's what i think so i think that people that build this way i don't think this is actually the correct way to play gpps and i know a lot of people do this um so let's look at a couple of other things, other ways that you could play with this or to, to do things a little bit better. Um, first, let's let's um, let's reset the exposure so we don't get max fifty percent anymore. First thing is let's um, let's do a couple of tweaks. First, let's see if we play put max of uh, minimum of two uniques in every lineup. How that kind of changes things. Um, not really that much. I mean, you'll notice that Storm Hunter is still getting pretty well represented here. So it's not really changing things all that much. Um, but let's see if we change the actual way we rank them, if that's going to change. So first of all, um, there's a lot of ways you can do this, okay? But within Sabre score, let's at least do do the service of, of putting the right slate, Okay. So let's now put in the settings for a large slate, which is 1K to 10K players. And well, small slate, 1K to 10K or large slate. So is this a small slate with only 15 fights? That's 15 fights. I think it's it's meet, it's middle. Um let's put in large for the hell. Okay. So when we do this. Now it gets a little bit less, you know, Peyton Stearns. Now, now it's not 100% Peyton Stearns. Now, now you're reducing things a little bit, and you're getting a little more exposure for some of the other uh, other players. And you're also getting a min two unique. So I think that this is is a better is a better way to build because whether you, whether listen whether you want to get in the weeds of how the how these uh, things are calculated or not. The large slate, you know, lineup uh, metrics and things like that. You know, at the very least, you're getting at least some kind of adjustment for the slate and some kind of adjustment for what you need to win the slate. Okay. Um, another way you could rank these if you wanted to. I mean, you could do it by, well, let's do it by percentile. Like you can you can rate these by the 95th percentile, for example, of outcomes. But what you'll find is that's not that much of a difference either, okay, especially in tennis, because again, the way tennis distributes results, it's not that much difference between two, two players with the same medium. They're usually going to have a similar uh, high, you know, uh, 95th percentile as well. Uh, another way you could do this is by ownership. So you could rank them by ownership, which is not going to really help you too much because you don't want the highest owned, play owned fighters or players. What you could also do is you could you could you could sort by a like an ownership. So you could put sort by my own uh, like product geometric mean. Let me put one here. Uh, oh, normalized value. And you could use my my own by the product geometric mean. We'll save this metric. And let's see what that looks like. Um, which one is it? My metric? This one. Yeah, so geometric mean, again, it's it's not that big of a deal. It's you're still getting a very similar distribution of results. 
So let's then take it to the next step and let's do a contest sim. Right, so we're going to add a contest sim here and we're going to add something new. So how big is this contest? Let's, let's, yeah, let's be sort of exact here. Let's, um, it's going to be about 2745. First prize is 35%, right? So we're going to go, uh, wait, where are we? Contest sim. 20, Let's put 3,000, 35% to first, 20% entries paid. We don't need to do 50,000. We can do 50,000 since whatever, why not? So we're going to call this tennis MME. And we're going to save these settings and fields to lineups. Uh, field lineups uh, generally broken down. So what this is doing is this is. Um, is calculating what the fields are going to look like. So this looks like it makes sense. Based on savers of ownership, it's fine. So we'll save the settings. And then we're going to do a run, run contest set. And then what we're doing here is just figuring out, you know, different options and different ways to, to use the tools at your disposal to build lineups and to, to get some type of leverage or some, some differentiation. Okay, so it ran them. Um, and now we have to figure out how to rank them, okay? And the way that I think you're supposed to rank these is um, within Tennis MME ROI. So when you re-rank them using ROI, now Peyton Stearns drops a little bit, okay? And Veronica uh, Kudermatova goes up a little bit. Um, so what, what, what this is kind of showing me, and it, it, it happens like this every slide, like the more you really factor in what people are playing, you know, the more players you kind of get exposure to and, and the less likely it is that your top play is going to dominate the proceedings. Okay. Um, now the good thing is, is that your top play, like Veronica and Peyton Smith, you're still getting over the field, which, which it's still good, you know, um, but you're, you're getting some exposure from these other, these other, uh, these other players. I, I do like the min unique too. I think that that, um, I think that helps you a little bit. It helps the randomization uh, a little bit. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to save this one and just, just to show you, I mean, I'm, this is all going to change, okay? but I just want to see what would happen if you went three uniques, like what, what that would look like. I mean, not that much, right? But you'll see just, just much more, you know, juice. And not more, more juice, much more, just more combinations, you know, more combinations of players. And what if you did four uniques? I'm just trying to see what this would do. Yeah, it's still letting you, you know? So four uniques might even be you know even more kind of i want to see almost off the board so you did four uniques for example now peyton stearns is not even your highest known fight highest known player you know so you have to you know, these these are your decisions i hate to say it but there there is no right answer especially with the very it's a very nascent business this contest sends um, so I can't really tell you what the best way to do this. And that's, what's kind of fun. You know, the, if I, if everybody knew exactly the right way to play, then the game would be solved and then nobody would play, you know? Um, so, uh, what I'm also going to do, I'm going to save this one as well. Oh, this was interesting. This only let me get to 24 players. Let me just see. Ah, so it wouldn't even let me get to 20 to my 40 lineups out of my pool if I went to four uniques, which should say something, you know what I mean? Um, so I'd probably limit this, this kind of like unique whittle down to say three. Okay. Um, now here's another interesting question. Let me, let me put these in just for the help, just so, so I don't forget. Now, 
all of my uh, analyses for the purpose of this slate and for whatever I do is based on the, the lottery, like the, the, the big MME. But as I mentioned, there's also this 180 and, and definitely think that this tournament requires a different type of analysis, right? You're not, I mean, yes, you have to get somewhat different, just, but you don't have to get as different. So I'm just going to build one lineup. I mean, sure, what I can do is just go to that same lineup that I, that I brought up earlier, right? Um, and I, that's actually not the worst idea in the world, but just to show you how we can use these tools, let's redo the, the contest sim with the 180. And let's take those settings. So let's, let's find this here. Uh, I don't want to edit this. I wanted to find the contest. Um, Breakpoint. Let's do this. Breakpoint. All right. This is a hundred and it's only sixty-seven players. And let's pull this in. Let's put this in. Settings. Add contests, and we'll call this a breakpoint. Well, it's not actually 67, right? Because, oh, it is only 67. So 67, and then it pays, same thing, like 11, like 30% 30, 30 for first, is that right? Maybe a little less. And then 20% of, yeah, so 20%. So let's put this in. 67 per 67 players got 30 percent for that 25 percent for first more like 20 percent of entry saved all right let's run contest for we don't need to use we'll just use one unique we're going to save settings for a break point and then we are going to run the contest sim Well, we re already ran it. Can we, it's already here? Oh, not yet. Let's run it again. And I wonder if it's running it for both. I, I guess it is. Okay, so let's, um, let's rate these by Breakpoint ROI. So not surprisingly, um, it's pretty much what I said with a couple of exceptions. Um, but I, it's important to be able to do this. What's this here actually? This is new. You can change this within the contest sim. Did this just changed literally while I was here, this, this kind of view? I don't know. I'll look into this, but um, so yeah, you're then you would definitely get a different type of build with the 180. I would imagine it's just, it's just less less risky, but uh, and then just for the, I'm not gonna deal with the entry editor right now. But that's pretty much it. You know, this is uh, tennis is 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 a, a sport that requires nuance where you can find it, but it is sort of a chalky endeavor. You know, you have to be. You have to try to get different without getting too too crazy. And, and uh, so far, so good. But uh, that's it. Hope to do more of these. Again, these are more, you know, it's a question of timing. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it.